and we're rolling. All right. So again, our question of the day is, of the three types of rocks in the rock cycle, which one is going to have identifiable, identi identifiable um, fossils? Really quick, I'm going to go ahead and take attendance. It looks like I have two people, but I know where they are. Oh, no, Hassan is ill. That sucks for poor Hassan. And everybody else seems to be here, so yay, um, us. Okay. So I'm going to put um, 25 seconds on the clock. And in 25 seconds, could you please now turn with your pair share partners and share out which of the three types of rock cycle is going to have fossils? And then tell me why. It's the why that's important. On your marks, get set, go. that lab you can look at the pictures that I took draw and color those pictures and then decide which one of the uh, processes is happening in there so that is on that is on canvas but for right now let's go ahead and come over here Asa if you wouldn't mind turning that a little bit I'd appreciate it and let's talk about what the three rocks are can someone please tell me one of the rocks not the one that has uh, fossils in it Jose, what's a rock that is not going to have fossils in it? Wait, what? Not going to have fossils. Okay. William, you want to help out? What's a rock that is not going to have fossils in it? I'm asking Jose. You're taking away the learning opportunity from somebody else. There we go. Let's go ahead and write that down. So, igneous rock. Igneous rock, can someone please, other than Jose, because he got us started, tell me how does igneous rock form? It can form either from the eruption of a volcano. Okay. Or being put into a inside the earth. Okay, so it can happen inside the earth or um, outside the earth. But what's it come from? Braden. Yeah, so it's when magma, I'm just going to use magma as the term, but magma cools. So when magma cools, you get yourself an igneous rock. All right, let's go ahead and talk about what happens to fossils if you bring them into magma. If you have fossils in a rock and it melts down to magma, are you going to see those fossils anymore? No. No, you are not. So that's going to be uh, an impossibility. So that is not going to work. Thank you very much. Let's go ahead and tell me another rock then, not the one that's got fossils in it. Asa. Metamorphic. 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 All right, somebody tell me, other than Asa and William, how, and Jose, I said other than you, man. How, oh, and Brayden. Could you please tell me, how does metamorphic rock form? Ethan. Uh, igneous or sedimentary rock that uh, have a lot of heat and pressure. Right. This forms from extreme heat and pressure. Extreme heat and pressure. So much heat and pressure that it is going to distort and ruin a fossil. Not going to be able to see those fossils in there, people. No, no, no. What's the last rock, Justin? Sedimentary. Sedimentary rock. How does that form? Um, it's like gathered and layered over time. Wow, what's gathered and layered? Oh, it's over there. Yeah, so this is when sand slash mud, basically little tiny pieces of rock sediment. gather, right? We call those sediments, gather uh, over time in layers. Now, there's no big damaging change. 
as ink and then the front set, it's just going to layer up. And if a fish dies, it's just going to get caught in those layers. If I die, I'd get caught in those layers. And you'd dig me up and you would see me, you know, preserved. If there wasn't any major disturbation, disturb, disturbing of the soil. So here is where we can get fossils, right? Why? Because the extreme heat and pressure is going to damage the fossils here. The melting of the magma, right, the melting of the rock down to complete magma is going to obliterate the fossils here. The only thing that's going to allow it um, is sedimentary. This is probably going to be a test question, and on the test, if you say sedimentary rock because the fossils aren't going to be damaged, I'm going to be like, how? Why, is it, why are the fossils going to be damaged here? Or why are the fossils going to be damaged here? You have to explain what's happening here that tells me why there's no way a fossil could be in here tells me why there's no way a fossil could be in there. You can't just say sedimentary rock, they're not going to be damaged. Well, why aren't they going to be damaged here? I'm going to want to know that so that I understand you really know what you're talking about. You got me? Thoroughness. Speaking of thoroughness, don't forget that if you want to retake that quiz, you're going to come into Liberty Time today, and so you're going to need to pass before we leave today. Okay, so what we're going to do is do a little deeper dive into these rocks today, taking notes. And then we're going to take uh, opportunity in class to build our own sedimentary rock in the lab area. I uh, want to remind you that there is going to be a quiz on the rock cycle this Friday. So begin the process of studying tonight by doing your homework. Somebody raise your hand and tell me, what was your homework for tonight? Something about questions. Something about the questions. Thanks for getting started, Logan. Yeah, so we're going to take notes, and there's questions on the side. You're going to answer those tonight for homework. So let's go ahead and get started with our notes. If you could please take out your 203 table of contents. And write this in. Can you just talk to your dad? Sounds good. Actually, science. Yeah. Science. 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 all right my little beautiful people i am going to model the note-taking process for you if i am moving at too fast of a clip you need to not scream at me but you need to just inform me i really like the outline so let's go ahead and get started by looking at the essential question this is going to be the question we're going to write down that's going to help us focus throughout our notes and the focus is going to be how do rocks change over time? So how do rocks change over time? I'm going to move this a little bit to see if I can maybe get a better way to this out. All right, now I know some of us are not used to nor do not like to take notes, but this is a huge part of the educational process. We are practicing in ninth grade so that we get better and better and better at it as you move to higher education. So let's just do it. All right, the first thing um, we're looking at at that top, it says Earth. We're going to say Earth is a system. Is a system. All right, so what is a system? A system is many interacting parts. Many interacting parts that form one. That form one whole. And that whole is the earth. Sorry about my handwriting. I'm really working on making it better. William, do you need a pencil? Make sure you're writing stuff down. Yeah, I know. You're amazing. Let's talk about what those interacting parts are. The first one is water. Water is part of what sphere? Hydro. There you go. The second, air. Part of? Atmosphere. The third, land. Part of? And then the last, life, biosphere. 
these interact to change rocks. These interact to change rocks from one form to another. This is called the rock cycle. Miss May, happy to see you. Or did you go to the nurse instead? Or both places? So if we're talking about the rock cycle, let's talk about what a rock is. A rock is a naturally occurring solid material made of minerals. Naturally occurring solid material made of minerals. And how many types did we talk about yesterday? Three. Boom. There's going to be trois or tres or three different types. So three types. The first type let's go ahead and talk about is igneous. All right, so igneous rock is rock that's been completely melted below Earth's surface, then cooled and hardened. Completely melted. Completely melted. I'm going to say deep below Earth's surface, but I don't care if I'm right there or not. Below. Earth's surface, then cooled and hardened. And it doesn't always have to harden beneath Earth's surface. Oops, hardened, hardened. So igneous, it's completely melted, turned into magma deep below the Earth's surface, then it cools and it hardens. And there are two types. What's one type that we've talked about? <laughs> Let's do that one first. Intrusive rock, it's got the I-N. So intrusive, and an example of that, does anybody remember? Yep. Granite. Granite, Granite is super hard building material. So, in intrusive rock, we're going to put some little bullet points here. The magma hardens below the surface. So, this stays in, I'm going to underline the I-N for in the earth. Now, it only stays in the earth until, you know, uh, weathering brings it to the surface, and then we can, or we mine it out, we dig it out. Another way to look at it is this magma intrudes into existing rock. So intrudes means squeezes between. For example, if Zai and Akela are having a conversation and I intrude in it, then that means I am kind of pushing myself in between their conversation and getting in the middle of it. 
That's what intrusive, intrudes. It's intruding in between already established rock and then cooling. Great, and make sure that you're not jeopardizing your success. All right, what's the other type of rock that we have talked about this igneous? Extrusive. Extrusive. Example? Uh, obsidian. I like it. I see your future, Asa, as an earth scientist. So in extrusive, if we follow the same format above, in this case, the magma reaches the surface as lava and hardens. So magma reaches the surface as lava and hardens. And this is kind of hard um, to think about because lava and magma are the same stuff. It's just science always categorizes everything. All right. So then if we still follow the same format above, this doesn't stay in, it exits the earth. Exits, I'm gonna underline the EX, exits the earth. And then we should have one more thing at the bottom, it's not intruding, it's what's called extruded. It's extruded onto the surface. If you brush your teeth in the morning, which I hope you all do, you extrude your toothpaste onto your toothbrush. You're basically squishing, pushing it out, extruding. What would science call that? Say again? What would science call toothpaste out of the bottle? Extruded toothpaste. Oh. <laughs> all right, my darlings, let's go ahead and look at the next side. Don't jeopardize your success. I'm going to leave that up here for a little bit so that those of us that are catching up can do that. Let's go on to our sedimentary rock on the next side. Am I going too fast? Sedimentary is rocks that form from dot dot <clears throat> and I will pause so that you can catch up. Hey, how'd the game go last night? Sorry? How'd the game go last night? It's actually really warm though. It's not going to be warm. So yay, um, yay. Um, let's go ahead and look at how sedimentary rocks are formed. These are rocks that form through a process. The first process, and we're gonna move in a little bit over here because we wanna do some writing here. So the first process means weathering. So we have to talk about what this is. This was something that you had yesterday in your lab. And I want you to know that weathering is the breaking apart of rocks into sediment. So we have to first break down a rock. So breaking apart rocks into sediments. So we're breaking a big rock into smaller pieces. Okay, that's where it starts. If we're gonna make a sedimentary rock, we have to have the stuff. How do we do that? We break it down and that's called weathering. What word is in weathering that should look familiar to you? Weather. Weather. So that breakdown happens due to ice, wind, water, all that kind of stuff. All the spheres. Uh, yeah, all the. And then the next thing is we got to move it. This is called erosion. God bless. Erosion and weathering are often mixed up, but erosion is not breaking apart. Weathering is the breaking, and erosion is the moving. This is moving sediments. So if you see a 
river carrying uh, lots of brown, muddy water, that's erosion happening. It's the carrying away of sediments. And then the last thing that has to happen is we drop those sediments off to a new location. This is called deposition. So deposition. And again, deposition starts with D, so does dropping. So we are dropping sediments into a new spot. Awesome. I'm going to write the word fossils over here so that we have another little reminder that fossils are only found in sedimentary rock. Will you with me? Yeah. Okay. So now that we've got them into a new area, we still haven't made a rock out of them. We have to then um, compact them. So the first thing is after this, I'm gonna put an arrow from deposition down here to kind of show what happens next. And I'm gonna say sediments. are then compacted. And compacted, I'm gonna um, circle that or do this thing. Compacted means squeezed. I'm gonna show that like this. So lots of pressure over a long period of time, they're squeezed. Or they are, um, they go through what's called cementation or cement. And notice the word that I've just written is cement. cement. So cementation happens. And we're going to talk about what that is. So cementation, this is when minerals um, I should say dissolved minerals but whatever are carried by water but I'm going to say H2O which is water if you want to just write water do that and deposited between tiny spaces. So I'm going to show what that looks like. I'm going to draw a little tiny sand particles like this. These are my little <laughs> tiny sand particles. And then as the water evaporates, it leaves behind the minerals in between the little pore spaces of the sand, and it cements that sand together, just like that. That's cementation. It's basically cementing those little grains of sand um, together. William, darling, I need you to like, write this down. Yeah. I know you keep saying yes, but I need you to actually do it. The next and last is called what? Metamorphic. There you go. And metamorphic is rock that has been changed due to heat and pressure. An example of metamorphic rock would be limestone. Limestone turns into, does anybody remember? Marble. Marble gets 
um, easily dissolved. Do you know why? We'll talk about it in a little bit. But this little line right here, this arrow, this is the process that we are really focusing on the processes. Does anybody remember the process that has to happen for limestone to turn into marble? We literally just wrote it down. Heat and pressure. Right, so let's write heat up here and pressure down here. Heat and pressure turn that into marble. That, or those, are the notes for um, the rock cycle. So if you look then down below, I've given you a little rock cycle that you can go ahead and fill in tonight as you are going through your notes. So down here at the bottom, what is all this stuff that's underneath the crust? Magma. So let's go ahead and write that in. Come on, little pen. So this would be magma. And then if we look up here, this arrow, right? If we have this arrow right here, what is happening? What kind of rock is this if it's under in, the in, surface? Intrusive. That's right. And um, if it's ignorance. out of the um, volcano, what kind of rock is this? Extrusive. Right. And so that's kind of how that works, okay? So I'm going to leave that to you, and then your homework is going to be to go through these questions easy peasy, but this is important for you to remember Walk away from it for right now, and then tonight, when you've got like a couple hours away from it, go back and try to process these. Okay, don't do it right now. Go back and try to process. Right now, what we're doing is we're going to do a little lab, and you are going to create your very own sedimentary rock. So this is going to be an investigation that we're going to do um, on sedimentary rock. Could you please grab this piece of paper, take one, and pass it down? The back of this is a small write-up that you're going to do and turn in. And if you don't get it turned in by uh, class period, totally okay. Do it tonight for homework and get it turned in to me tomorrow. So based on what we did in class and what we talked about, you are now going to apply that knowledge and then after that, you are going to write up your understanding. So it says investigation on sedimentary rocks. You're going to have materials, a sand, your sand, one packet of sugar, 25 milliliters of water, one petri dish, tape, and a marker. Follow the directions A, B, C, D, and E. And then you have pictures down here. Read what you are supposed to be doing on each of the pictures, please. Then on the back, you are going to show your understanding. It says, answer the following questions in paragraph form. So this is after we go through um, the lab. You are going to be in the same groups that you were the day before. Uh, Maya, I'm going to go ahead and put you in Cooper's group. All right. So what you're going to be doing is following. Ma Cooper, how many people do you have in your group? Great. That works fine. So you're going to follow the directions, okay? And then do a write-up in paragraph form, complete sentences. Do you understand? First things first, what's the very first thing you do when you're over there? Someone tell me step one. Asa. Safety Asap. goggles. What? Safety goggles. Nope. Oh, what does step one say? Yeah, okay. Write your class period and table number on the table. Yeah, write your class period and table number on the tape and then put that in the bottom. So everybody get up and go, please. Follow the directions. Clean up after you're done. If you need me, reach out first to your partners and then to me. Thanks, kiddo. Absolutely, 100%. Don't be long though, okay? I want you to be able to be a part of this so that you can get your full points. I know, honey. I'm right there. Okay. So, this is my problem. Just in the right? To determine the age of carbon, write an exponential decay function for Okay, how much carbon 14 remains after the carbon Okay, so it has a half life of this many years. Yeah. Okay, so then how many of those years are in? that how many has gone by um, around like five okay so i did that so i divided it by its half life no. this would be the fifth time this would be how much what, right? okay yeah right that should be right yeah that should be that much of yeah i said it's around like that much so then how much okay so then what's 0.75 of that how many of that carbon would be left so then what's what's 0.75 Oh, I'm sorry, you did that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. 
right? Wouldn't that be right? Yeah. Well, that should be right. I would think so. Well, I just had like a round we just get the water yeah, because there's like points. Yeah, get the water from the sink. <laughs> Aren't you glad you did that in science? Yeah. Honey, just a minute. Yeah, the sand's already in the petri dish. Oh. All right, my people, check out what we're going to be doing. So we've got sand, blue sand, we've got water, and now we're going to put the, salt, the sugar in the water. So, ladies, let me ask you, what does this, in the notes we took, what does the um, sugar represent in the water? I don't know. <laughs> salt. Well, salt or sugar, it doesn't matter, but you're dissolving it in the water. Cold or hot? Okay, that's right. <laughs> when you go do your write-up, make sure you take your notes, okay, and look at your notes. Okay. So you're going to dissolve that, and then you're going to pour that into there. Then we're going to let it evaporate. We're going to let all the water evaporate overnight. Does that dissolve? I don't know. Does it look dissolved? No, no, no. Okay, then keep stirring. Nice. And then we're going to draw a picture here and say, hey, color in the water sugar solution between the grains of sand. And so the water and sugar gets all through the pore space. And then after letting it dry, what would be left behind the grains after all the water evaporates? What's going to be left behind the grains? And then we write it up on the back, answering these questions. So if you're at home, answer those questions.